Hey everybody, Michael Mann from Michael Mann Security Services. And very quickly, we're gonna talk about handgun support equipment. So this kind of uh, continues to go into this series of videos that we provided that are talking about response measures. We hounded and beat you guys to death on prevention. And so we've kind of moved into some of the response measures. And here in a while, you'll start to see we'll go back to some of the prevention measures. So today, we're gonna to talk about support equipment. So if you've got an arm team, what does support equipment look for you? Very specifically, support equipment for the handgun. So what is support equipment? Well, support equipment is gonna be that equipment that's gonna assist you with effectively deploying your handgun and everything that you need to keep the gun running if you were ever to use it. So we're gonna talk about a belt, we're gonna talk about a holster, a magazine pouch, and magazines. This sounds silly to talk about. I've been a student of Colonel Jeff Cooper's Modern Technique of the Pistol for 32 years now. That started in the Marine Corps in the mid to late 1980s, and I'm still a student and practitioner, and it surprises me just how much lack of knowledge that, that's out there on exactly what you should have when you buy a pistol. So it's like somebody buys a, a Maserati and they go and they try to buy General Tires for it. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. So let's talk about it real quick. So a belt, basic belts for your handgun so, uh, or, or, or for your support equipment. So look, I get it. You bought a pistol. It was $500. You had to get magazines. You had to buy ammunition before you know it. You're down $750 and the wife or mom is mad about it. I completely understand. But understand to be able to deploy that effectively, we're going to have to have a decent belt. And so that means going to Walmart or JCPenney or, or even Belk is not going to work. So when we talk about a belt, it doesn't have to be leather like this belt or like this belt, but it needs to be sturdy enough to actually support the equipment that's on it. Your holster, your magazine pouch, and of course the weight of the gun and the, the full magazine or magazines that are your magazine pouch. So uh, this is a belt, uh, and I don't sell equipment, but this is a belt uh, from Blade Tech. It's leather. It's got Kydex inside of it. It's very, very sturdy. It's going to support the equipment. This is a little bit, uh, and that, that's an expensive belt, or it can be. This is a belt that's a little bit less expensive, uh, Hanks belts. You get these for like $50, $55. They're all leather. They're made for concealed carry, so a little bit less expensive, but they are excellent belts, and they're going to support your holster, and they're going to support your magazine pouch and the weight of the equipment that's in it. So it doesn't have to be leather. There are some nylon belts out there like Blackhawk and some other companies that make some sturdy riggers belts that you can put your support equipment on, but I really like leather belts. Again, you don't need to spend, like, you know, you don't need to go to Thunder Ranch's website and, and get a Melt Sparks, a Melt Sparks uh, belt that's going to run you 120 bucks. You can spend $55 on something like this, and it's going to be sturdy, and it's going to work. Uh, also, make sure the width of the belt is going to work uh, for the width of, uh, of your uh, holster and the width of, uh, of that magazine pouch, all right? So belts, again, anywhere from 50 to 70 bucks uh, and, and up for a decent belt. Stay away from JCPenney, stay away from Belk, Belk, Walmart, get something that's gonna work for your equipment. Second is the holster. I'm a Kydex guy. 20 plus years ago, Blade Tech was the first Kydex distributor that I remember to come out and mass produce uh, holsters. I still have gear from 20 plus years ago from Blade Tech. It's good stuff. Uh, there's, there, is a, there are dozens now, or at least a dozen, Kydex distributors out there that are making holsters and magazine pouches. So it can be Kydex or leather, your leather holsters are going to be a little bit more expensive. So I don't care if it's, uh, if it's Kydex or leather, uh, but I would tell you to stay away from nylon holsters specifically. All right. So sturdy, again, made of Kydex or plastic and leather. That's what I like. So the other thing is I, with the holster is I want something that's going to be mounted on the belt. Something that mounts on the belt. And so when I have this belt on my trousers, and this isn't inside the waistband, doesn't have to be inside the waistband. The holster can be outside the waistband. Um, but I want it to mount. So when this is hooked to my trousers, this is not going to move. It's important that the holster does not move. So as I draw, present the pistol, this doesn't move around and it doesn't affect the grip. So if I've got to get the pistol lock for whatever reason, I need this to be stable, mounted to the belt. Uh, the other element with a holster that I like is I want the trigger guard to be covered. Uh, in my 32 years of experience as both a student, as a teacher, and a practitioner, two places where we have negligent discharges, one's out in the vehicle away from the range when we're putting our stuff up, and uh, outside of in the car or around the car, 
it's going to be when folks are going back inside the holster. So I want the trigger guard to cover the holster, or to, uh, I want the holster to cover the trigger guard of the pistol itself. Okay. The next element of the holster, I want to make sure it's made for the pistol that I am carrying. All right. So uh, look, if I've got a 1911 and now I bought a, a new SIG 226, and I want to try to cram that SIG 226 in that 1911 holster. Make sure that the holster that you're carrying or deploying is made for the pistol that, you, that you're gonna carry on that day. So again, make sure it's made for that pistol. Something else I like about holsters, I don't want the holster to collapse, okay? So collapsing means like a nylon holster, this is gonna close up. So when I go back in, so when I go back into the holster and I go to reholster that pistol, I don't wanna have to take my support hand or my non-dominant hand and try to cross over and try to open that holster up. I want this to be open and molded for the gun so it always goes right back inside the holster. So those are some things about the holster to think about. Doesn't have to be a specific brand, but I would suggest leather or Kydex. Our next element is gonna be the magazine pouch, very similar to the holsters. I like Kydex and I like leather magazine pouches. Um, I'm not telling you to stay away from, uh, from uh, uh, nylon, uh, magazine pouches. There are some nylon magazine pouches that have plastic inserts and work. I like Kydex and I like leather better. I want it to be belt mounted so it doesn't move around. So when I go to get the magazines out of the magazine pouch, I want to make sure that that stays stable on the belt and does not interfere with the reload. Okay. I want it to be made for the magazines that I'm carrying. And I like open top mag pouches, very specifically for concealed carry. So it's easier for me to get to the mags and to index my magazine. And indexing magazine is just the way we manipulate the magazine when we're loading or unloading the pistol. And uh, that's, that's for another time, folks. So I like it to be belt mounted. I like it to be made for the magazines um, that uh, obviously that I'm carrying. Um, I want it to be st uh, sturdy. I want the mag pouch to be sturdy. Um, and again, I like Kydex leather. Last thing we're gonna talk about real quick, magazines. Look, just get factory magazines for your pistol. If you're carrying a Glock, there are some aftermarket magazines for the Glock pistols. I will tell you, um, I would, uh, if I was carrying a handgun, I would buy the magazine that is made for that pistol. The only exception are 1911s. Uh, in my 32 years of experience in this system, and I'm a 1911 guy, um, the aftermarket magazines for 1911s are better than the factory mags. I, I like Wilson Combat, I like uh, Trip Industries. They're a little bit more expensive, but they work better. So factory mags, except for 1911s, with 1911s there's some aftermarket stuff that you're gonna probably like better, and it's gonna work better. Hey, we hope we, uh, if you ever had uh, questions about support equipment, I hope I answered the questions. Um, you can contact us at scottm, S-C-O-T-T-M, at michaelmansecurityservices.com, um, or you can get us on our Facebook page at Facebook at Safe With Man. And remember, it's about prevention, not response.